Be joined by Taylor Heineke here momentarily of the Washington football team, fresh off a massive win down there in Atlanta where their uh, running back caught a pass from Taylor Heineke back across the field, and then he took off from the five-yard line, mm -hmm. do dove, okay, crazy person, dive, incredible athleticism, and then knocked out a bound touchdown. They win. How you doing? Keep it moving. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, starting quarterback for the Washington football team, once played in the XFL. Ooh. What? Also at Old Dominion, when undrafted in 2015, now he's leading NFL teams into Atlanta and getting wins. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Heine. Yeah! Let's go, dude. How you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Hey, all fucking hell is breaking loose around your building. Keep your eyes peeled, all right? Just stay in the football side of things, Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Yeah, yeah smart, <laughs> smart, Taylor. Don't say anything. Um, obviously, you have nothing to do with anything that's going on in the outside world around the Washington football team, but I would like to chat about your journey here. I would assume last year, after how you played against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in playoffs, you were introduced to the world, by the way. I think we all learned of you quickly. Loved your style of play. Going into the offseason, you get re-signed. You get a couple-year deal for the Washington football team. I don't know if you thought, like, hey, this is my team going forward or whatnot. They bring in Fitzmagic, who seems like the perfect perfect almost mentor for you he gets hurt early now it's your team how has this been mentally for your time here with washington have you been able to ride the roller coaster are you excited do you feel prepared has it been as expected or no way yeah this last year has been insane you know going from taking classes at odu and thinking i'm not going to play football ever again to starting against tom brady in the playoffs and and here i am starting for the washington football team uh after fitz goes down week one so uh, Fitz, has, Fitz has been around the facility. He's done a great job of getting me prepared every week. Um, you know, that's just credit to him and, and the you know character that he has. Um, so he, he's helped me out a lot. And, and again, you know, we have a lot of dudes at receiver and, and, and running back. And that offensive line, I tell you what, they, they've played their ass off the last four weeks. So, um, you know, it, it's a collective effort. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can get this thing, this ball rolling. Hey, speaking of weapons, Terry McLaurin, like, how good is that guy? And what, what does he do that, that separates him from other receivers? Yeah, they call him Scary Terry for a reason. And, uh, you know, when you watch him run routes, uh, they're, they're crisp, he's fast. And that when the ball's in his hands, he makes special things happen. So, um, you know, with the addition of Curtis Samuel, you know, we got Logan Thomas out there. And uh, you got Hump at, at the F. So, you got a lot of dudes out there. And, uh, you know, when you, see, when you see Scary Terry out there one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you want to give him a shot. Yeah, you scrambled for your life and then threw one up as a fuck it, Terry's down there somewhere type feeling or play. <laughs> it is. Watching you is electrifying. It is, you are awesome to watch. And you said Fitz has done a great job around there. Did you hear the comparisons of you to Fitz? Uh, obviously, whenever Fitz was brought in, did you take that as a, a shot? Or did you say, like, yeah, this guy is pretty similar to my style of play? You guys both seem to be incredibly intelligent. The grit seems to be insane. And obviously, your story is one that you're going to have to continue to earn people's respect, just like Fitz Magic. I assume you two are almost like a perfect pairing. And I don't know if Ron did that on purpose or not. Yeah, I don't take that as a shot at all. Uh, the guy's been in the league for, what, 15, 16 years for a reason. So, uh, you know, hell, if, if, if I can do that, that would be great as well. And, uh, you know, I grew up watching Brett Favre. So, uh, you know, watching him do the things out on the field for a number of years. I was a Green Bay Packer fan, so I was watching him every oh, weekend. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I, when I was watching him, you know, he's the reason I fell in love with the game of football. So, you know, I, I try to be like him, and it, you kind of see it out there on the field. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Go ahead, Ty. Taylor, have you had the opportunity to like take a step back and realize, like, holy shit, I was a backup quarterback in the the XFL last year, and then I'm starting a playoff game, and now I'm a starter. Like, are you locked in on what you're doing right now? Have you had an opportunity to just kind of look back and be like, holy shit, I really have come this far in this short amount of time? Yeah, I think I took that time uh, this off season after the Tampa game. Um, maybe a couple weeks to, to really kind of let everything soak in and uh, kind of be proud of myself for, for, you know, being resilient and, uh, you know, keep going at it. So, again, you know, I don't know if you guys seen the story, but I was living on my sister's couch and, you know, they were pushing me. My, my brother-in-law was throwing a 50-pound vest on me every morning, walking the dogs five miles. So, uh, you know, kudos to those guys. They, they, they really kept on pushing me when, when I was down deep. Yeah, did you grow up in Georgia? Was your sister and brother-in-law in Georgia where you're living on the couch and they got a chance to see the game, obviously, yesterday, and we saw you get emotional in the post-game or presser or whatever. That's whenever, you know, because you're not just a Madden character. You know, you're not just a rating. There's a, there's a human moment that happens there, and I'm happy you got a chance to kind of take it all in yesterday. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm from Georgia, 
and uh, I bought a house down there, so we all live within 15 minutes of each other. And uh, it was it was a really cool weekend. So my sister had her first baby about a week before training camp started, but and I wasn't there for that. So I finally got to meet my little my little nephew uh, Saturday night, and then uh, my mom decided to take care of the baby, so my sister and, and brother in law can come to the game and then get out of the house a little bit. So it was cool, you know. Obviously. The ending there was awesome for them to see, for them to experience, and uh, you know, again, it was just it was a special moment there. Hey, look at you! Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys have a couple uh, Bud Lights last what? night? What? You see it right there? Yeah, <laughs> I did. I saw it immediately. I thought, wow, this guy is a fucking legend, dude, wearing a Bud Light hat onto this thing. You only drink Bud Light. Bud Light's your uh, go-to, your drink of choice. Uh, and now it is. Um, it was cool. I I, I come to the facility this morning, and I have. You know, about four or five packages from them. I, I start opening them up. About six, twelve packs. Woo! A, a big Bud Light cooler full of merch. So what? Uh, nice little victory Monday, Monday uh, present there. Hey, this is what it's like to be a starting quarterback in the fucking NFL, dude. Look at this Bud Lights just sending them a bunch of stuff. What a luck! <laughs> hey, look at you, guys. Yeah! Hey, yeah. Let's go. Good a for you. Better from the, uh, a little better than the XFL days. When you win, you get a little seltzer. But, you know, here we go. We got about <laughs> 60 Bud Lights to share with the guys. What XFL team were you on? I was on the St. Louis Battle Hawks. Oh, hey, St. Louis. That fan base was insane over there. Who was the starter? The starter was Jordan. Tom. Tom. Jordan Tom. 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 He was a stud. He was almost like going to be – that team was loaded, I feel like you guys had. And then whenever that league stops, did you immediately sign? Is that whenever you thought about potentially having to hang it up forever? Or is it did your transition to the NFL take some time there? Yeah, so, you know, that – the XFL kind of called it quits, you know, with COVID, and then uh, success. Thing, by I, the way, success. I think it should be remembered that it was a success, and then COVID kind of killed it. I think that should be exactly. Something. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. So then, uh, my my first thing was, hey, I, I think I want to get into coaching. So I called Coach Scott Turner here because uh, of the, our history in Minnesota and Carolina, and uh, I said, hey, uh, you guys got a an open coaching spot. And he said, well, first things first, you got to get your degree, and just don't retire just yet. You know, with COVID uh. happening, you just never know what's going to happen. So. You know, from there, I went home, started training, and, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, in the NFL, you kind of hope for injuries and uh, some some weird things to happen. And, you know, sure enough, you know, Denver, that, that week, they had no quarterbacks that could play and had a receiver playing. They brought me up to be emergency COVID quarterback. A couple things happen here and there. Alex Smith gets hurt, and they throw me in. So... Uh, again, it's been a it's been a wild year. Man, you're awesome. Enjoy the hell out of those twelve packs, pal. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Taylor. For uh, this off season, how much different was it for you? Because you got the ex- the two year extension, and then you kind of knew you were going to be on the football team going forward. So, like, how much different was this off season compared to previous ones where you didn't really know what your future was? Yeah, it was a lot different. Uh, you know, obviously in years past, I feel like I just had one foot in, one foot out, and I'm just clawing my way to either make practice squad or the team. And uh, this year, finally, I kind of get, you know, a little bit of a signing bonus, some guaranteed money. And I finally felt like I had two feet in the door. Not to say that I was comfortable, but um, a lot less stress going into, you know, OTAs and training camp. So uh, a big weight was lifting off my shoulders for sure. Hey, we know you you seem like you're an absolute leader out there and you have a lot of confidence in yourself. Did you know, like, eventually, whenever you did get your opportunity in the NFL, did you know that it would go this well? Did you have that self-belief? Yeah, I know. I, I I always know I can play the game. I I, I had that confidence in myself, but you know it's gonna kind of sound kind of corny, but you know when you lay in bed at night and you're re- getting ready to go to sleep, I you just close your eyes and you envision success. Um, you know if I if I have this opportunity, how's it gonna go? And I envision myself throwing touchdowns to to guys, leading the guys down the field, and you know being put in that two minute situation where you go win the game for the guys. So um, you know that's happened twice this year, and you know hopefully we can we can. Have a game here or there where we're up by 20, and we don't have to really rely on that. Yeah, well, don't. I mean, every game I was part of, it felt like a cardiac arrest situation. I couldn't even fathom what it is at quarterback. Did you just, did you kill everybody at Old Dominion? You had to have, especially after watching you now. You just had, did you guys win by 50 every single game? And how did you get overlooked so much, you think? Yeah, you know, I think I got overlooked just because of my size. Um, oh, you're you know, short being, guy. Yeah, 5'11, 6 foot. Oh. Is it five eleven or six foot? Is it five eleven? Because as soon as they announce five one one, that is not great, right? Especially a quarterback position. Well, I tell the ladies I'm six one, so you know. Smart. Put uh-huh. those boots on. <laughs> Put those boots on. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, but you know, going back to Old Dominion, um, you know, we we ran that hurry up old school Oregon offense where you know we spread them out. We had ten personnel, we spread them out, a bunch of dudes out there, and we're just 
dinking and diming them. And then you had some fast guys out there that would run past some people. So I was throwing the ball 50 times a game, and we were scoring 50, 60 points a game. So um, it was a lot of fun there. We broke a lot of records. But, again, you know, NFL is a different game. Absolutely. Diggs, go ahead. Uh, Taylor, we talked a little bit about Alex Smith. What did you learn from Alex last year, and, and what was it like seeing him come back from the injury and, you know, finally getting to play again? Yeah, so I knew – I knew of his injury. Um, I knew it was pretty bad, but when I, I when I first got here, I went to the training room. And I saw him getting treatment on it, and I saw his leg with no sleeve on it. And I, it looked like a damn shark bite. Uh, it, it was it was nasty looking. And uh, so, the way he approached every day, whether it was film treatment on the field, um, helping guys that he didn't have to help, uh, he was just a true professional. So, uh, you know, I, I, throughout the years, I've taken a lot things from different quarterbacks I've been with, but Alex was a, was a, was a cornerstone for sure and uh, of who I am today. Uh, how do you feel about Ron Rivera? This is the last question, by the way. We can't thank you enough for joining us. I assume life is hectic as a starting quarterback in the NFL, especially after a big win. Uh, we appreciate your time. Ron Rivera, though, he's one of the, it feels like, a staple over there. He's helping guide the future of the Washington football team. You know, last year there was a lot of question. It seemed like there was controversy around every single bend. Ron Rivera just seems like this consistent character, even after beating cancer and going through that entire thing. What is your relationship like with him? And it seems like he has never wavered. He's always the same exact person on the sideline, it looks like. Whether you guys are up or down, you just throw a pick, you get back in it. Like He seems to be one of the most consistent people of all time. What is your relationship like with him? Yeah, it's growing every week. Um, again, it goes back to 2018 when I was with Carolina, I was backing up Cam, but you know, throughout the years, he, he, he does a great job of letting people be who they are. Um, and and you know, he just cares about when you're at the facility, you're focusing up, and it's all about football. And these guys really gravitated towards him. And, you know, obviously that whole cancer thing last year, of uh, him grinding through that, um, seeing him, you know, continue to come to practice and, and grind through it, um, you know, that gives people, like, no, you know, no excuse to go out there and, and not give it your all. So it, it's huge for us. He's a huge cornerstone for us. And, um, you know, he's a great coach. All right, man. We can't thank you enough for your time. Good luck with your Bud Light. Good luck with your season. Congrats on the success. You deserve it, pal, even though you're only five foot eight or whatever. We appreciate you so much, man. Appreciate you guys. No, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Heineke. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's unfair that they judge him for not being tall enough. The guy's a baller, AJ. That's bullshit. I think it's changing. Guys like him are, are helping change the narrative. You don't have to be 6'4 and a big stand-up pocket passer anymore. He He's... He's electrifying to watch. 